Today on Behind the Frame, we're gonna make your veins pop. Because that's what the ladies love. Welcome to Behind the Frame, where you can learn how to create cool props and effects from your favorite movies, shows, games, and more. I'm Scott, which means today we're doing another effect tutorial. We're gonna be making this little ditty right here where I have an absurd amount of veins showing through my skin, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that's an absurd amount of veins showing through your skin. Obviously, when you apply this effect for yourself, you don't wanna do as many. I did a bunch to show better the effect because it's harder to see when there's less stuff so I just threw a bunch of stuff in there to make it easier to view. In the clip that we're basing it off of this scene from Iron Man of 2008 there are only a few surfacing so right here clearly less is more. You can also use this effect for say rogue stealing someone's powers or just whatever other crazy things you guys can think of to do with it. So let's figure out how we can replicate this effect. <laughs> So, like always, I'll be using After Effects as my compositor of choice. I also shot this footage of me talking on my phone when suddenly I'm overcome with an abundance of veins. So let's add those veins, shall we? We drop the footage into a new After Effects composition. Now the first thing we need to do is track my face. Now I usually like to use Mocha AE for this instead of the After Effects tracker because the Mocha uses, it tracks surfaces and the After Effects tracks specific points. And so since we're tracking the surface of my face, it only makes sense to use Mocha. So let's track our footage and go to animation, track in Mocha AE. You can select where you want to save this project and other details, but I'll just hit OK so we can get into this. Go to a frame where you can clearly see the face of your actor, where it's not moving or at any crazy angle. In this case, we'll be using around here, where the side of my face is fully present. Then we click on Create X Spline Layer Tool and start drawing around the area where we want our veins. Go down to the bottom and make sure perspective is checked so we can get the best track possible. Then click on the track backwards button to finish it up. Our track is looking pretty good, so here's an important step in the process. Go to the last frame of your footage and click on the button that says push the surface to the corners of the image. This is going to align the plane to our footage so that we can work with it properly. Then we click on export tracking data and we are going to copy the tracking data to the clipboard. Back in After Effects, we'll create a new black solid that we can paste our tracking data into. Just click on layer and command V on a Mac or control V on Windows. Now all that scrumptious tracking data is in our composition. Now the reason I paste it into a random solid that we're not going to be using is because if we ever needed to copy that tracking data again, we don't have to go back into Mocha and copy that to a clipboard. We just have all that data in After Effects that we can copy if we need it again. Now on to the veins. I've done a Google search for images of veins and I found a couple good ones. I've included these in the project file so that you can have them for yourself. They are all black on a white background, which is great because all we need to do to get rid of that background is drag them into the composition and change the blending mode to multiply. You can do that with all three images or just one or two, depending on what you're gonna be using for your effect. I'm going to be using multiple copies of each because again, I'm going to create just a ton of these so that it's easier for you guys to see. But, you know, make sure that you're doing what's appropriate for your specific effect. It's important that you start arranging your veins how you want them to look on the last frame of your composition because that is the frame that we aligned to the surface of our track in Mocha. Changing the size and opacity of each one gives it randomness. I also added a fast blur to the layers to make them less sharp. And here's a neat trick. You can apply a lot of blur to one of them and lower the opacity a lot and it looks a lot deeper inside your face. This helps to add dimension to all these different layers that you're throwing in there. Still with me? We got a little while to go, so hang in there. I promise you, it looks cool. Hey. 
Hey, I'm Scott from the future. I know I'm not supposed to play around with the space-time continuum because it might upset the natural flow of things, but I totally forgot to tell you that links to the vein pictures as well as the background plate of me just talking on my phone will be available to download for free in the description so you guys can do whatever you want with it. Hopefully good things. Don't do weird things with a video of me, although I do understand the urge. But I would also like to say uh, a nice thank you as well as plug a friend of NerdSync, Dylan Ogush, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Girodo, Girodo, should have asked but I didn't. Anyway, you should check out his channel because he does awesome effects. And I'm not just saying that, the show he literally does is called Awesome Effects. And I think the last video he did, as of this post right now, he made the Batman Dark Knight Batarangs as well as Arkham City slash Asylum Batarangs, which are really cool. And it's great to see he has a really cool DIY spirit about it, uh, good ideas that of just making stuff out of cheap things that you find, and it's great. So you should check those out. And now back to the show. Now with our vein layers looking the way we want them, we can select them and pre-compose them. I named this pre-comp veins, so I wouldn't be confused that there are veins in here. Let's go to the pre-comp and create a new white solid to fill out the alpha channel. This is gonna help us color our veins later because color correction works a lot better when there isn't transparency. We can go through and change the opacities and positions of the layers around some more if we wish. Then, when we are done, we can go to the main comp and change the veins pre-comp to multiply again. Next, we grab the pen tool and apply a mask to our pre-comp to make sure it's just around the face area. Feather it a lot to help it blend. Apply a tint to the layer to make it a desaturated blue color. I also dropped the opacity to about 40%. And now is when our lovely corner pin data that we put in that black solid comes into play. Go to the first frame of your composition, copy that corner pin data, and paste it right into your veins pre-comp. Now the veins track nicely with my face. Not bad, but we need to animate it and make it look like it's actually popping out of my face and not just something I drew on myself because I was bored in class. So we create a keyframe for the mask path and mask expansion right at the point where we want it to be complete. Then we go back in our timeline and move the mask to create a smaller area and turn the mask expansion down to make it so you can't see the veins at all. Now comes the fun part. Duplicate the veins pre-comp by pressing Command D on a Mac or Control D on Windows. Drag CC Glass onto the new copy, making sure that it is above the corner pin data. Always make sure that any effects you apply are above the corner pin data. Also, the settings for your specific shot will be different because of the lighting, but for this shot, these are the settings that I used. Change softness to about 12 and height to negative 10. The negative will make it look like the vein areas are protruding. In the light menu, change height to 65 and direction to negative 85. The direction of the lighting depends solely on the lighting of your original shot. So in this shot, the light was coming in in front of me and to the left. So we had to change the direction of the lighting to mimic that. We'll also lower the opacity of our original vein layer that does not have the glass effect. The very last thing we're gonna do is make the face go pale to show that whatever is doing this to me is sucking the life out of me. So create a new adjustment layer, apply a tint and drop the amount down to 25 or so, then apply a curves adjustment and position the whole layer below the veins but above the background layer. Go to the red channel of the curves adjustment and drop that down, then go to the blue channel and bring that up. Go to the place in the timeline where you want the paleness to take full effect and make keyframes on both the tint and curves. Go back in time and change the amount of the tint to zero and hit re set on the curves adjustment. Now we want to make this paleness only apply to the face. So we take our pen tool and make a mask around the face and neck and feather it a bit. Keyframe the mask position to make sure that it follows the face throughout the entire clip. Lastly, we add our color grading, turn on the motion blur for the veins and the composition for good measure, and we end up with this. So that was a bit of an involved process, but I think we got a cool effect out of it. One that I think you could use for at least two things, so there you go. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Behind the Frame. If you have any suggestions for future effects that you'd like me to try out, please leave them in the comments below because I really, the hardest thing about doing these episodes is coming up with ideas to do effects and props about. So we really need your help on that guys' front. Personally, I'm having a hard time coming up with Halloween themed ideas and we really want to do a Halloween like month of stuff. So, you know, help us out there. If you have any cool Halloween effects that you think would be cool for me to try, please leave them in the comments. And as always, you can subscribe for more Behind the Frame. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Scott Nice Wonder. Join us next week when Josh shows you guys how to make a Green Lantern power battery that also doubles as a Halloween trick-or-treat candy bucket. That's a lot of things rolled into one. So, what, what else could you want? I don't know. See ya. Limber up, limber up for the show. Now is when that lovely, lovely, lovely tracking data. Oh, it's so lovely. It's the loveliest tracking data I ever did saw. I was do 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 ba do. So ba da ba do ba dum. Know what I'm saying?